waking up this morning, mm -hmm. you are the global CIO of UBS. Mm -hmm. What goes through your head this morning when you read this fire and fury line from Trump? We have a very set playbook, observe, orient, then decide and act. And I think in this case, we're at the observe and orient ourselves, calibrate, as you said. And I think first thing is observe what the market reaction is. You look at the COSPI, so less than under 1% down. So as you said, I think the moves are moderate here. But then we do have to orient this rhetoric uh, in you know, what it means historically and then also in the context of the Trump administration. I, I was trying to think this morning, so, okay, so I'm driving home from work and my wife says, I'm going to be met with fire and fury at the door, you know? So that's... You've had this experience, Yeah, yeah, Scott. yeah. But so, because I've been married for a long time, I know, okay, I'm not going to be getting dinner, I better have some flowers, but it's not divorce papers. But for a new president who uses hyperbolic language, the world community is trying to understand what he means. Well, let's just, with the help of the New York Times, just put some context around this. We have an op-ed from the, the New York Times. Mr. Trump's menacing remarks echo the tone uh, and the cadence of Harry Truman in 1945, when, of course, this was uh, when he dropped the bomb on Hiroshima. He urged the Japanese to surrender, warning that if they did not, they may expect rain and ruin from the air, the like of which they have never seen. Now, whether he deliberately channeled Truman or not it is a moot point. But I think Daniel put it nicely. The risk of miscalculation is very high. With the risk of miscalculation very high, do you act or are you in reflect mode? And as you look at it historically, Kennedy was restrained when he was going up to the missile, uh, the Cuban Missile Crisis. So th this, is a, this is a move different to other presidents. Yeah, I'm, so speaking uh, about the rhetoric being used, I think that uh, when you start to hear rhetoric about clear and present danger, to uh, the U.S. way of life or uh, defense, you know, defending, protecting and defending the U.S. Constitution. Those are kind of terms that maybe around the Gulf War you started to see. That's how they escalated the war of rhetoric, provided Donald Trump sticks to that same diplomatic language. That, that might be the way that I would look. But as far as the escalation here goes, I, I do think you, sanctions have a uh, checkered history in the past. but. In this case, you know, one of the things that we're watching closely is Rex Tillerson, Secretary of State, is in uh, Southeast Asia and trying to get nations there to take a harsher diplomatic stance. We know that there are technologies and, and components flowing into North Korea through dummy corporations and things, mm -hmm. and, I, and there is a chance that sanctions could really slow this process. It's